How's it going everyone? I am Jeremy Alexander and welcome to another video. In this video we are going to be making a custom cursor or a reticle and you may be thinking you know how to do this but I'm going to show you a better way so you actually have more control over the actual cursor itself. So you see here I have a sprite and it has its own little image of a crosshair, reticle, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I want this to be my mouse cursor. I want this to have the same exact size that it currently has, 32 by 32. And I want this to be a sprite object that I can have animations for just in case I want to do that. Now, Construct 2 unfortunately makes this a little bit more difficult. It's actually pretty easy, but it, it involves an extra step. So the first thing I want to do here is I want to call this, I want to rename this and call this object cursor. The second thing I want to do is I want to go into my event sheet and explain to you what is going on. So what I want to do is I want to add the event to our system, start of layout. So when this layout starts, let's hit A on that action to bring up the actions window. Uh, and normally what I would do, and I've already have these plugins brought into the project by making a retro style project. I have my audio plugin, my browser plugin, my mouse plugin, and the rest. And what I would do is I would go to the mouse plugin and I would set the cursor from Sprite. It literally sets the mouse cursor to the same image used by a Sprite, which means any Sprite that you have in the object types folder, you can set the mouse cursor to it. So if I do that with our object cursor, you would think that this would be perfect and then we get all the features and options that we would need, but that's actually not the case. I mean, it works for what it does and it turns the mouse into a smaller version of your Sprite, but for my purposes, I never, I'm never in need of this. Now, that's not to discredit that functionality because there is another thing that we could do with that functionality. Uh, and actually, what we're going to be doing is using the other function provided. So let's actually add the action to our mouse here. And instead of setting the cursor from the sprite, we can actually set the cursor style. Now, since we're not setting the cursor sprite anymore, we're going to be handed a bunch of different sprites for the mouse that are that you're used to seeing you know like the actual hourglass things like that the hand the text select all those things that you're used to seeing in an application or software you can actually set the cursor to that so if that fits your needs then that's going to be perfect for what you can use it for but for our needs we actually want to set it to our custom sprite and we want to maintain the size and we want to maintain our animations so we're going to set the cursor style to none on the start of the layout now that we have it as invisible, we actually have no mouse, even though it's still there, we can't see it. So now what we need to do is we need to add an event in our system to our every tick, and we need to tell our object cursor sprite to set its position to mouse.x and mouse.y. Now, putting that mouse there, you can see it turns green, that's actually getting this mouse object from the plugin, and then it's returning our x and y positions on the layout. So if we go over here and we hit play, now we actually have our mouse cursor working as intended. We actually have and can maintain our size of our mouse, and now we actually have the cursor with no issues. So I prefer doing it this way uh, for all the mouse cursors that I need, all the reticles that I would need, anything like that. And there's so much more that we can do with this. Now if our, if our object is over something, we now have the full control of this object being a sprite versus before versus using the mouse plugin to actually control this. Now we can actually detect to see if we're over something. And if we're over an object, we can switch the animation frame or the animation itself to be a different color. So we can have an object here. And now let's just see if I can make this real fast. Let's make this 32 by 32 as well. Let's make this object red. And let's just call this our object, uh, I don't know, object block. And in our event sheet, if our cursor is overlapping our object block, then we can actually set the frame of the cursor to something else. We can set the animation. It doesn't really matter. We can actually here let's set let's set the let's set the frame actually. I think that'd be more fun. So let's turn the frame speed down, or let's actually go to the default animation here. Let's turn the speed of that down. Let's go to our animation frame. Let's turn the speed of that down. And let's actually add a frame here. And actually, you know what? Let's delete that and duplicate this frame. When we duplicate this frame now, what I can do, I'm going to get a lighter color of this. I'm going to color in this so it's a little pink, but at least it'll be similar to the red box that we have. And now that we have this, when we go over here, all we have to do is set the frame of our cursor objects to be frame one. 
uh, and we can hit X on the keyboard here by selecting this block and we can set it back to zero if it's not overlapping that object. Oops, let's set that back to zero. And let's hit play. So this is gonna give us, and you can actually see it, it's kind of going behind. So to fix that, I can just set the Z order to the bottom of my layout here. There we go. You can see that we can do a lot of more customized things with a cursor when we actually have it being a sprite that is every single frame per second setting its position to the mouse X and mouse Y with the mouse cursor invisible. So that is how you can make your own custom reticle. I really do hope that you learned a lot from this. We might be doing more with this in the future, actually setting up a camera with this cursor object. So thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, then leave a thumbs up and leave a comment and I'll be sure to answer any questions that you have. Again, I'm Jeremy Alexander and I'll see you next time.